Good evening, CNH. Are you guys ready to get this party started? Before we begin, at first, I really want to thank you for coming, because it means a lot. And I hope that over the course of tonight, you learn something new. So please, don't be afraid to ask questions. Just use the chat box, and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can at the end of our webinar. I guarantee that if we don't get to your questions tonight, you'll have your questions answered in due time. The District Qantas Family Committee has put a lot of effort into making this webinar happen, and we've got another one coming up, which we'll talk about later. That being said, please give us your undivided attention and allow me the opportunity to introduce your fantastic co-hosts for the webinar this evening. Sorry, please just give me just a second. <clears throat> All righty, here we go. Representing Desert Oasis uh, Division's UC Riverside, we have Tim Davis. From Capital Division's UC Davis, we have Annie Yu. From Magic Kingdom Division's Orange Coast College, we have Jennifer Quay. From Paradise Division's UC San Diego, we have Candice Chu. And although there are some slight te technical difficulties, we hope to have from Metro Division's CSU Long Beach, the lovely Renee Eguia. So those are your co-hosts this evening. And before they take it away, I just want to tell you all really quickly about the webinar that we have tonight. It's primarily, we're, we're having this webinar because we want you guys to have successful Kiwanis Family events. They're awesome. So think about it like Kiwanis Family events are the soup that holds this bowl of ramen called the Kiwanis Family together. And you guys know what crappy ramen tastes like, right? The cup noodle stuff? Well, imagine if that soup base was just blow your mind awesome. Because that's like what will happen if you have more successful Kiwanis family events. So let us help you. This, ne this evening, we will be reviewing our Kiwanis family periods program, as well as some tips and tricks regarding how to hold successful Kiwanis family events. Type out your questions as you have them, and we'll answer them in order at the end. So without further ado, here is Annie Yu with more on the Kiwanis Family Periods. Hello everyone, so my name is Annie Yu and I'm going to be talking about Kiwanis Family Period. So the Kiwanis Family Period was implemented for each season for each season to focus on one of our free tenants, fellowship, leadership, and service. During the month of September through November, we had the first of the Kwan's family periods fall into fellowship. The next period is winter leader land, which happens during the month of December through February. Finally, let's not forget the third tenant, service. In the month of March to May, get yourself ready to spring into service. And to prepare yourself for the Kwan's family periods, I'll be going over each period with some examples of what you can do during the months of the Kwan's family, um, Kwan's family period. So fall into fellowship. I hope all you know that fellowship is a tenant of bonding with people at service, I mean social events, which is exactly how you would get to know people in the Kwan's family branches around your area. Basically, plan and perform socials for the months of September through November. Think about which Kwan's family branch you would like to get to know more and plan according to what they enjoy doing. Sport activities will be a great social for the younger age branches, or you can plan a social fit for all the branches as holding a picnic. More social uh, examples are board games, board games nights, 
bowling, and a cook-off competition. Next is Winter Leaderland. There are different ways which you can advertise leadership, such as a member chairing an event, also planning and hosting an event with other Kwan's family branches within the months December through February. Finally, we have Spring Into Service. Plan a community service event, which you could do with the Kwan family branches to help out the community. It could also be an event that both clubs really enjoy working on. It would be great to have an outdoor project as the Kwan's family period is through the months of March, April, and May. Examples are planting trees, making school supply kits, helping out with the marathon race. When you're planning your events, you're not restricted to only these events that you, I went over. You're allowed to get as creative as you want, and you're highly encouraged to plan events with the different branches of Kwan's family. On that note, here are Jennifer and Ermine to go over how to plan events. Give us just, just a second as we hook up Renee. She will be here to present in just a second. Can you guys hear Renee? Okay, Renee, you have the all clear. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Renee, and I'm going to go over the first section of planning events. And I just want to thank you for your patience. Um, so first off, when planning your event, the first thing you ask yourself is, what tenants should I follow? In case you forgot, three steps of Circle K are fellowship, leadership, and service. And all of the Kiwanis Valley branches utilize three tenants, excuse me, from Kiwanian hosting social events, right, to Circle Cares, launching at most food shelters, and even key clubbers caroling door to door. There's an event for everyone. Just keep in mind that each event has a different theme. That is, what kind of feeling do you want to instill attendees after they leave? Do you want Kauaians and other guests to feel like they've had a great time bonding with others and building that networking and relationships within the club after the social? Or even do you want those circle cares to feel like they've done a great job volunteering after they've done a service project? Or even key clubbers knowing that they've invited someone's day by singing holiday carols, carols and participating in winter life activities. Last but not least, know your target audience. Keep in mind that there may be differences among the various Kiwanis Valley branches. For example, you may notice that key clubs, key wins, builders, and even key kids may be a little more energetic and active than Kiwanians. So organizing an event such as a sports day tournament may be lots of fun for the younger Kiwanis Valley branches, but may be inappropriate for Kiwanians. An event such as creating pediatric trauma program or PTP dolls is probably easier and Kiwanis family. Not only that, but other Kiwanis Valley batches can also partake in this simple activity. Next, I'll pass it on to Clay, who will discuss the second half of planning your event. Thanks, Renee. Hey, you guys, this is Jennifer Clay from Orange Coast College. Let's say that you have your brainstorming for your event down, and you've been super awesome about it. Now, here comes the legit planning. Logistics. It's time for you to crunch some numbers, solidify your plans, and make your event happen. Putting on a large-scale event is a team effort, so a great way to start is by forming a committee to plan your event. It's an incredible way for you to learn to delegate tasks as a leader, and more importantly, create leadership opportunities for your club members or with other schools if it's a division-wide event. Of course, when you're planning, you need to figure out where your event will be located. I don't think OCC Circle K has ever had to pay for a venue. All of our events have taken place either at a park, in our cafeteria, 
at our school, which has been the location for Spring Training Conference South and numerous Kiwanis Family Training Conferences, or at our local Boys and Girls Club, which is run by one of our Costa Mesa Kiwanians. Ask your Kiwanians, or run out your community rec center. There are so many resources open for you, and you just need to use them to your advantage. You'll also need to think about a budget. And a budget is a plan on how you will be allocating your costs or how much you expect to make as a result of the event. You should also think about where that money should go, whether it will be donated to a charity, one of the district fundraising initiatives, the Eliminate Project, Pediatric Trauma Program, or Not For Sale. One of the forms you may need to fill out is an ERF or event request form. Now, this form is crucial, and I mean crucial to complete, if you would like to work with other KFAM clubs not sponsored by your Kiwanis or Circle K clubs outside of your division. You can find the ERF at cnhcirclek.org under jcloud, and then click on Policies and Forms. Once you have that completed, you'll need to send that into regional advisors at least three weeks before your event, and the regional advisors will approve or deny your ERF. Even if the ERF is rejected, no worries. You can still hold your event and invite the Circle K clubs within your division. And of course, publicize, publicize, publicize. Make everyone go crazy for your event, whether it's by visiting other clubs to make announcements, publishing an article or an ad in your club or divisional newsletter, creating a Facebook event, visiting your Kiwanians and sending them a personal invitation, which they will love, or making posters and advertising throughout your campus or community. Do whatever it takes to make your event a success. And of course, have fun with it. Now, I'm going to get back to Renee to talk about working with the Kiwanis family branches. Hello again. Um, I'm going to go over the first section of working with other Kiwanis Valley benches and also some ideas which will be helpful and useful for all of you. I'm going to go over Kiwanis and Young Professionals. Kiwanis clubs sponsor all of the Kiwanis Valley clubs. For example, although my home club, Kelsey Lobby, belongs to the Metro Division, my sponsoring Kiwanis division belongs to Division 13. My sponsoring Kiwanis Club is Long Beach, and therefore they sponsor the local key clubs in this area, such as Long Beach, Poly, Pilligan, Tablia, and Wilson High School. I've noticed that many Kiwanis Clubs I've visited here are of older generation, meaning that there are a lot of folks that are middle-aged and are working or they have retired. The young professional members are recent college grads and are either beginning their careers or the careers have already been launched. I've actually had the opportunity to meet with Kate members, and I realized that some of the Kate members were recent Circle K alumni. Like Circle K clubs, Kiwanis and Young Professionals also have service projects, socials, and fundraisers. One great perk that board members, such as Kiwanis Valley Chairs, can do is attend Kiwanis and Young Professionals meetings. It's one great way to network with other members and also represent your home club. For instance, I've had the opportunity to attend my sponsoring Kiwanis Club meeting for the four years I've been in Circle K. And I can tell you that I learned so much about them, from their occupations to the reasons why they're in Kiwanis, but also learning more about what the city of Long Beach is up to based on their program and guest speaker for the week. With this in mind, I'd like to introduce to you the Kiwanis Takeover. So what exactly is the Kiwanis Takeover? Well, it's basically a day where a Circle K club can take over the Kiwanis meeting. It's essentially, you can do whatever you wish within an hour time frame. And it's also a great fundraising opportunity where you can find Kiwanians for doing ridiculous things or being themselves. Like I mentioned earlier, by attending Kiwanis meetings or organizing events where Kiwanis clubs and other Kiwanis Valley branches can attend, you get to learn a lot about Kiwanis, such as their career. I've actually had a personal occurrence where one Kiwanian gave me his business card and told me that if any of the circle cares from Long Beach would like to give a tour of his birthplace, then to shadow the program and also follows with them to lead on. In addition, um, I can tell you that circle Bay clubs or excuse me, Kiwanis have worked with Circle K clubs and sponsoring clubs for many, many years. And so they can surely tell you advice and wise wisdom they'd like to tell you so that your club can improve, among other things. So don't, don't be afraid to listen to what they've had to say. And also, when working with your clients, don't forget about etiquette. 
Remember, you are making a lasting first impression on your clients and young professionals' clubs, so don't forget to be polite and respectful. Also, by meeting other Kiwanis Valley branches, you have a chance to find out what is their best form of communication. Some agrees may not like social media such as Facebook, but other people may also prefer emails or phone calls. So don't forget to sound professional, formal, and double check the spelling and grammar if you do use social media. When attending a meeting or events, don't forget the slogan. <laughs> when in doubt, casual it up. This is casual, just to be clear. Again, you are representing your club, so first impressions and lasting impressions are of utmost importance. Now we're going to pass it on to Candace, who will talk about Action Club. Hi everyone, I'm Candace from UCSC, and I'll be talking about the Action Club. So the Action Club is the only service club for adults with disabilities. They have over 9,000 members worldwide, and they, com they completed over 92,000 service hours each year. And with the Action Club, um, some event ideas that you can hold with Action Club to reach out to your Kiwanis Family Branch. Um, some event ideas include um, a popular event that Circle K has done with Action Club are the Special Olympics. Um, you can also hold fundraisers with them, such as eating out. You can do arts and crafts, such as making holiday cards, um, painting, or even creating educational posters. And another event idea is holding the drive. Um, you can either collect um, items such as clothes, books, canned foods, um, and you can collect these from your local community centers, restaurants, and stores. Also, another idea is to reach out to your Action Club um, is that you can host monthly birthday parties for Action members and get to know them on a more personal level. And it's a really great way to reach out to, your act to the Action Clubs in your area and your club can even co-sponsor an action club with your Kiwanis club. And up next is Tim, Tim Davis, to talk about Key Club and Key Wins. Hello, everyone. Um, so Key Club and Key Wins. Um, Key Club is the oldest and largest service organization for teens. And Key Wins is similar um, in that, well, they started out as an all-female club, but now it's co-ed too. Um, two of their biggest partners are UNICEF and March of Dimes. Now, if you were a part of Key Club, then you'd probably remember those orange boxes that you carried around Halloween time, and then you'd like, go around houses and ask for them to donate change. Well, that was UNICEF. Um, and if you want to host events with Key Club, some good options include Key to College, which will be explained in detail later. Uh, food packaging, which is a personal favorite of mine because it works out very well and it's very simple. Other things you can do is also host officer training, which would be perfect for the winter leaderland period. And you can also introduce them to CKI through like shadowing or some other event. You can also SAA, which means Sergeant at Arms. It's basically you work behind the scenes to like provide like logistics and support. Um, or you could host a Kiwanis Appreciation Day, which includes other branches as well. As a final note, you should always remember that when working with Key Club, um, they, are, they do have limitations about what they can do and can't. Um, don't have events that are either too far away or that end too late. And, well, the problem is that if they don't have as an, an availability of rides as us, um, and we can't give them rides either. So if it's too far away, then you, you can't make it. Um, also remember to make sure that the event doesn't conflict with or be too close to important events like dances. Because one time I had an event that was one day after a dance and only one person showed up. And remember, always earth way in advance. And last but not least, we do have our Builders Clubs and K-Kids. Okay, so this is the last part of the Kiwanis family that we'll be covering. Um, it's K-Kids and Builders, as Tim said, in which traditionally, K 
K-Kids is the elementary subset of Kiwanis, and Builders is home to the middle schoolers. However, you might find that some Builders clubs will take in 5th through 8th graders. Because they're much younger than us, you'll need some extra patience when you're working with these two branches, but there are a lot of fun events that you can still have with them. Recently, our Costa Mesa Builders Club held an anti-bullying poster competition in which Builders members would make a poster to be judged by our Kiwanians and Circle Kers. So it's a great way for the branches to work together for a great cause. Your club can also host bug or bring up grade centers where you can recognize top students for their hard work in school and leadership. With your presence, it's also a great way to motivate them to continue their journey in the Kiwanis family. As college students, hopefully we've learned enough to help the kids with simple math and English. So why not set up a tutoring program with them? You could also host a sports tournament or host an event on their school campus, such as a health fair, a science fair, or a college night, similar to a key to college, but on a level that the kids will be able to understand. Personally, my little brother's in second grade, and his school is already starting to introduce the importance of college to the elementary school kids. So as Circle Kers, we'd be an incredible resource for them. All right, next we'll be talking about successful events, and Renee will be enlightening us with Kiwanis One Day. So in case you guys don't know what Kiwanis One Day is, it is an event that occurs once a year during our term where all the various Kiwanis Valley branches of the Justice Fest spend the day doing service. For instance, my sponsoring Kiwanis Club of Long Beach informed me that their division was planning a divisional Kiwanis One Day event last year. Each Kiwanis Club had a club representative to inform members from their home club as well as the clubs they sponsored, such as C clubs, UN, Circle K, Builders, etc., about the event. In addition, there was one Kiwanian in charge of the entire event, and that individual was also constantly communicating with all of us from the various Kiwanis Valley benches. And the Kiwanis One Day event was a collaboration between the Kiwanis Club and the KSM batches and Compton Initiative, as well as volunteers that helped out during that day. We went to a middle school in the Compton area that was in dire need of a makeover. Over a hundred of the Kiwanis Valley batches and many A variety of activities, such as repainting the different murals, repainting the fence, even repainting the walls, and fencing and other yard work. And just to let all you guys know, uh, the Kiwanis one day for the 2012-2013 year will be on Saturday, April 6th. So save the date. Next, I want Addie talk about Keter College. Hi, everyone. My name is Annie, and I'm going to be talking about Keter College. So K College is an event where Circle K clubs will invite key clubs within the area to the respective college. This event should be planned way in advance as you have to send out event report forms out to key clubs within a certain distance of your school. This is a great event for you to bond with key clubbers as well as for them to peek into college life through workshops of how to apply for college, what college life is like, perhaps a tour around the campus, and much, much more. Now here's Jennifer to talk about United K Holiday Pro Party. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Um, OCC Circle K is part of something called the Costa Mesa United K, which includes all the Costa Mesa Kiwana Sponsor Clubs in our community, including OCC Circle K, our new Orange County Young Professionals, which we're very happy about, two of our high school key clubs, and our Builders Club. Each year near December, two representatives from each of our United K clubs are put into the United K Holiday Party Committee. The United K Holiday Party takes place in a nearby church, and that's just for the venue. So remember, we talked about this guy's venues, yeah. And we end up having a huge holiday celebration with dinner, fun games like Pictionary, a talent show, and we make Christmas cards to donate to our local soup kitchen. Also, in order to be admitted into the holiday party, each guest must bring one unwrapped new toy, and those toys will then be donated to our local Boys and Girls Club for their own Christmas party. It's an event jam-packed with service and fellowship, and it's amazing since it allows such a dynamic of Kiwanis Family Clubs to bond and have fun for the holidays. So now, Tim will be talking about Weekend of Awesomeness Weekend. Hello. Um, so Weekend of Awesome this weekend, otherwise known as WOW, is something that um, Desert Oasis hosts. And it's basically a DCM, but with a lot more added to it. Basically, all, our, all the clubs in the division go to the hosting club, which switches off every month. 
Um, and for Desert Oasis, uh, we provide rooms because the distance between our clubs are so far apart. Um, but yeah, basically, throughout the weekend, we we'll have socials, activities like scavenger hunts or movie night. Um, and then we'll also have one or more service projects. Um, and it usually ends with like a DCM. And a lot of times we'll have like breakfast provided um, and that. Uh, and what's so great about WOW Weekend is that it gets so many people interested in actually going to DCMs and we always have a great turnout um, and it's great for meeting people from other clubs too. And sometimes, like um, last time, we actually got a different division in um, Foothill Division. They actually got to attend our WOW Weekend too, so that was really awesome. Uh, and lastly, it's perfect to schedule it around major events like UNLV Serenade and UCR's K-Rock because it helps bring out even more people to the event. And for our last event, we have Candice talking about M-Ball. Hey everyone, it's Candice again. Um, I'm going to talk to you about UCLC Circle K's largest external fundraising event, which is called Mass Grade Ball. I hope you all attended this year. Um, but we hold this event and we raise money for pediatric trauma prevention. And each year we have a large event on a three-decker yacht, which includes dancing, casino tables, a fortune teller, entertainment, and raffle. And it's a really fun event. And um, we, we raise a lot of money each year. And a lot of planning and time goes into this event. But it's a really great night and a really great experience for everyone who attends. Um, for this event, the earth needs to be done well in advance. And um, each year, a lot of planning goes into that. So we try to make it a large event for all of CNH. And up next, I'm going to talk about do's and don'ts for, your, for planning your Kiwanis family event. So communication is really key when communicating with Kiwanis family branches. So it's really important to keep your Kiwanis advisor updated about what events you're planning to have, if you're going to have any meetings coming up, and for anything that you'd like them to attend and be informed about. Up next, along with communication, you should keep in touch with your Kiwanis family clubs um, the clubs in your division, and those that you want to hold potential events with as well. The next tip to do is to always visit the CNH Circle K website for resources. Um, a very important resource um, that's new this year is the JCloud, which is an online Circle K resource database, and there's every file on there that you could possibly ever need, um, and you can download them in any format, such as a document, PDF, PowerPoint, etc. So it's a really great resource to have. Um, the next tip is to always ask for advice and questions. Um, don't be afraid to get opinions from other people and reach out for help if you are looking to plan an event and you'd like to get some feedback on that. And also, it's important to talk to your regional advisor. In order to get your ERFs um, approved, you'll need to get um, approval from your regional advisors as well. And it's a really great idea to keep them informed about any upcoming events you have and just to keep them informed about what your Kiwanis family um, what your Kiwanis families are up to date with. And lastly, um, another tip to remember is to get ideas from your club members and to keep it simple. Um, the acronym is KRS, and I said it before the line came out, but KRS, remember to keep it simple. And now on with the do's, um, with the don'ts. Um, a couple of things to avoid. Um, do not reject opinions. Oftentimes, uh, members that have attended previous events can give you really helpful feedback, or even new members with new ideas. Um, they can give you opinions on potential events that you would like to hold with your Kiwanis family branches or events in general. And it's a really great idea to keep these opinions um, in mind and stay open-minded about feedback that um, you have. Up next, um, don't procrastinate. I know we have all done this at one point in our lives, but procrastinating is um, a really great way to not have a successful event because you may forget um, an important, an important um, something important that you have to do and you'll procrastinate and forget about that. And um, Also, another thing to try to avoid is to not get overwhelmed. Um, I know planning events can be stressful, um, but you also have um, a lot of help and a lot of support, such as your board members, your friends, um, other Circle K members from other clubs, and even district board members that can help you. So try not to get overwhelmed. Um, we're here to help you. And um, if you are a board member or if you would like to be a board member, um, do try not to ignore your predecessors. 
they've been in your position before and they can um, provide you with a lot of useful tips that they learned when they were in your position. So don't be afraid to go to them to ask for advice or if you want an opinion on maybe something that you could, they could have done better and that you can implement um, in this current year. And to conclude, um, we have Tim Davis. He's going to give you some final pointers. Oh, and also, okay. <laughs> and also don't forget to try new things. Don't feel pressured <laughs> to reinvent. Thank you very much, Candice. Um, so basically, some last things to take note of. Always make people feel that they're welcome. And make them feel that they can ask any questions that they want. And when you can, try to attend branch meetings. Um, well, the meetings from all the other branches, like T-Club and Kiwanis and such, because you always want to be, whenever you can, in direct contact with them instead of always talking over emails and texts. And while you're there, it's a perfect time to ask them about events that they might be interested in, or um, if they're hosting any events soon, um, ask if you can help them with it. And always have icebreakers ready, too because you want to feel, make people feel welcome again. Um, and so, you know, they might end up learning each other's names and being friends after. And last, remember, always have fun. Because if you're having fun, chances are everyone else is probably having fun too. And that is that. Alrighty, thank you so much, Tim. That concludes uh, the majority of what the District Kiwanis Family Committee wanted to present tonight. Um, if you guys have questions, now's the time to ask. Um, we, whether or not it's related to um, some of the material that was presented, please just type your questions into the chat box and we'll get to it as they come. Questions are coming in. Uh, this is just a message to uh, my committee. As you guys uh, pick your questions, go ahead and unmute yourself, and then you can answer them. Actually, someone earlier, uh, they asked a question, are there some sample schedules or workshops for Key to College? Um, to that person, there are. If you check the CNH Circle K website on the JCloud, there is the um, Key to College guide. And the Key to College guide will detail out um, specifically how to plan schedules and workshops regarding Key to College. Um, and it also provides you with some ideas. If you, um, if you do, though, if you want a sample schedule or workshop at all, feel free to email me, and my contact info is available um, on the slide, and I can get back to you.
Okay guys, hey, Quay here. So there was a question that I uh, was wondering, I really want to start up a gay kids in my division. What are some tips and tricks on going about it successfully? Uh, one of the things that would be really cool is if maybe you can get your Kwanians into this as well. So maybe you can uh, maybe co-sponsor a K kids program. But if anything, go check with your Kwanians. Go check with your regional advisory. And if there is a Circle K Club or Kwanis Club within your area or even within the district um, who does have a K Kids, ask them to see how you know their experience was starting up the K Kids. So um, this is like another thing where you can just ask people and just use your resources, and that'd be really cool. And um, even go on the K Kids website, and they might even have some information on that as well. Somebody else asked a question about uh, where can they find resources to find the nearest Kiwanis Family Branches in your area. Um, the best place to find the nearest Kiwanis Family Branches in your area is uh, simply to visit either, um, well first of all, on um, our district website there is something called the Operating Procedures. And in that, um, in the Operating Procedures we'll detail out like um, the different Kiwanis divisions and where they're located in relation to our Circle K divisions. And so it's probably under um, governing documents in, uh, on the CNH Circle K J Cloud. But there you can find uh, nearby Kiwanis divisions and things like that. Or simply ask your Kiwanians. Ask your Kiwanians um, what, what division that they are a part of. And then usually um, that will give you an idea of what nearby, for example, Key Club divisions or Key Wins divisions there are. Um, also for Key Club, on the Key Club District website, they have mapped out um, a, uh, a diagram that showcases like where uh, different divisions are and things like that. And so if you want to, if you want to find a particular um, Kiwanis Family Club, your, again, to just recap, your top options are to check out the governing documents, the operating procedures of um, CNH Circle K. Secondly, Check out the Key Club website, the CNH Circle K. Uh, I'm sorry, CNH Key Club website, and um, that usually has a good breakdown of Key Club divisions. And third, talk to um, either myself if you still have questions, or um, any of your Kiwanians. Usually, uh, they're more than happy to help you out as well. Okay, hey guys, it's Quay again. Um, there was a question that asked, how can I learn more about Circle K? I have no idea what a regional advisor is. One of the things that you can do is visit our um, Circle K website, and whether it's like Circle K International, or you can visit cnhcirclek.org. Um, so those would be good sites for you to find out, or just, I guess, ask around. I mean, Circle Kers will probably know about Circle K. But um, for the regional advisor question, Mm, let's break it down like this. So your club has either a faculty advisor or a Kiwanis advisor, and those would be advising your club. Now, on a grander level, which is a the division, you have your lieutenant governor, who I guess you could uh, be, they could be synonymous to the president. Now, the president, of course, will need the club advisor, quote unquote club advisor, and that would be the regional advisor. So they would be in charge of um, giving advice to the division and looking out for the whole division. So um, they'll also be the people who you would send event request forms to. Also, if you don't know where your, I mean, who your regional advisor is, um, there is something online, um, but or you can just ask us. Um, just give us your which division you're in, and um, which club you're in, and we can give you your. Uh, we tell you where who your regional advisor is and their contact info.
Um, there's a question that asks, what does it mean to sponsor or co-sponsor a club? And um, basically, think of all the things that the Kwanians do for you. Um, they can either give you monetary sponsorship, so they will uh, be in charge of, you know, either holding your bank account or other things like that, or um, providing money for your club. Or they can also just be there to mentor your club, to lead your club, and to make sure that your club is going smoothly and um, going well and it's running well. So that's what sponsoring and co-sponsoring means. Hey, it's Candice. Um, there's a question about um, what is Kona's Monday or more in general, um, what is Kiwanis Monday about? So Kiwanis Monday is basically a day um, that's set uh, around April each year. Um, for 2013, it's going to be on April 6th. And it's just a day where um, different Kiwanis family clubs can come and make a difference in the community or, um, or in the world as well. Um, you can choose what kind of project um, you want to do on Kiwanis Monday. And you can um, normally Kiwanis clubs will plan their own projects for Kiwanis Monday and will invite um, other Kiwanis family branches. But it's basically just a day. Um, that has a set date where you can um, go out and do a project and do a project with different Kiwanis family branches. Um, there isn't a specific project that is set for this day, but it's um, up to you to go out and make a difference. Hey, um, so someone had a question they want to ask about, um, they, well, to talk about more um, on Winter Leaderland. Basically, like, as, um, like we said before, it's a period um, during the year. It's around the winter quarter where basically we focus on events that foster um, leadership qualities. Um, these events can be things like, you know, hosting workshops. Like we'll have workshops uh, um, or that they can host or... Um, officer training um, workshops and such, or, you know, they have, we'll have, like, committees that they can join or kind of help um, chair. Um, there's also lots of events that um, we'll kind of promote to, um, for general members to co-chair or chair. Um, you can also write articles, like, just talk to your newspaper, uh, I mean, your newsletter chair or whoever um, t is in charge of the newsletters in your club and ask them if you can um, write an article for them. Someone else also had a similar question that asked, what Kiwanis family events would you recommend clubs do to help foster leadership? Uh, one of the examples that I can think of is that um, United K has its own training conference called United K Trainer, and that usually takes place in about mm, maybe April or May-ish, around the time when um, the key clubbers and uh, the Circle Ks are all finished with their elections and their appointed board as well. Um, so we would host for a day the Kwanians and the Circle Ks will be in charge of hosting uh, several workshops, and we'll provide them, you know, like, breakfast and lunch and things like that, but we'll be talking about um, maybe a treasure workshop or how to work with the Kiwanis family or um, making SMART goals as an officer. And so those workshops would be held by either alumni who have had the experience of that office or um, past officers in the club who are still around. Hi guys, so my name is Arjun and I'm also on the District Game, uh, game Time Committee and I'll be answering, or I'll be one of the answers to question number 12, which is asking about the most meaningful experience that we've had so far. Uh, so I've actually had a lot of different experiences, but um, probably one of the most meaningful ones came from one of my meetings with our uh, local key clubs when we went to their meetings. So, oh, by the way, um, my, I'm also second year, but uh, 
Uh, so probably my most meaningful experience was basically learning that, you know, no matter how old you get, you can always learn something from any age group and any generation. At one point, I guess I thought that, you know, we were there to mainly mentor the key clubbers and learn from the Kiwanians. But something I learned really quickly because a lot of the new ideas that we, a lot of new programs that we worked with our key clubbers uh, with came from ideas the key clubbers uh, gave us themselves. Mm -hmm. Something just to take in mind is that you can always learn from everyone around you, no matter how young or old. So you should always keep yourself open to suggestions from any branches of the Kiwanis family. And yes, that is all. So I believe Connie's going to add to that as well. Hi, um, so this is Connie. I'm also on the District K Sound Committee. And um, so my most meaningful experience with KFAM would have to be Key to College at UCLA. Um, as KFAM Chair, I had to put on this event. And um, it was really difficult for me because I didn't have that much guidance on what to do um, with this event. So I was panicking like all over the place. I had no idea what to do. I was really afraid that nobody would come. And I would get no high schoolers at the event and just a bunch of volunteers. And it was really, really stressful. But um, the day of the event, there was actually a good turnout. And it wasn't as high as I envisioned it to be. It wasn't as high as like um, key colleges UCLA had in the past. But um, at the end of the event, I got a bunch of emails from um, key clubbers and their advisors saying, thank you for this event. It was like the best key to college we've attended so far. And it was really helpful, and it made me feel like I was making a difference um, in like the lives of key clubbers and stuff. So that was my most most meaningful event, and yeah. Thank you, everyone. So unfortunately, it is uh, it is ten o'clock, and so we will be cutting our uh, webinar off. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, we really do appreciate it. If you have further questions, concerns, or you just want to holla at your DK, DK fam representatives, then please feel free to con contact any of us via email. And if you like this district webinar and want more, keep on the lookout for two more coming up in, in the new year. So listen up and save the dates. The first will be a webinar on everything you need to know about district awards on January 3rd at 8 p.m. That will be hosted by the District Awards Committee. And the second webinar will be one on Kiwanis Family Programs and Events. And that one, again, will be hosted by us, and it will take place at 9 p.m. on January 13th. Again, those dates are January 3rd at 8 p.m. and January 13th at 9 p.m. The Facebook events are already, are already released or will be released soon, so keep on the lookout for those. Once again, thank you all for attending the first of two District Kiwanis Family webinars. As district board and district committee members, it really means a lot to have your support at these. And so from the DKFM committee, have a fun, safe holiday season and a happy new year. Thank you. <laughs>